GT bikes, absolutely rapid. But recently they've been hitting the headlines for the wrong reasons. Tour de France champion Egan Bernal suffered a horrible crash whilst out training on one and fellow Tour de France champion Chris Froome has suggested that they're too dangerous and should be banned. This is largely due to what's called head down riding, where riders will simply have their head down and not look where they're going in order to gain a more aerodynamic head position. And it's been known to cause crashes on the velodrome too, notably the Tokyo Olympics. So we're gonna explore if head down riding is faster, and if so, how much faster and how dangerous it is. Don't try this at home. Before we go any further, I think it's important to remember that riders do have a sense of self-preservation. They don't want to crash, and while there have been crashes in pro time trials, I can't think of a single one that's been attributed to head down riding, where a rider wasn't looking where they were going. That said, there have been incidents in amateur time trials and sadly fatalities, which have been attributed to head down riding. And there was also the famous incident that Alex alluded to earlier in the Tokyo Olympics during the team pursuit, where the Danish team collided with the British team. And that clearly was because they weren't looking where they were going. We're gonna do two runs on the circuit, one in the head up position and one in the head down position. Yes, Alex is going to ride both positions at the exact same power on this time trial bike. How come you said, oh, I'm just, are you not riding as well? No, no, I've, um, I've hurt my foot. Plus, you're a professional. Nothing to do with the fact it's literally gale force winds and about to rain. Oh, is it? I hadn't noticed. Anyway. In theory, the head down position should be faster, but let's see if it is and how much faster. Go on, I'll, um, I'm, I'm gonna go get a brew. <laughs> First up, I'm gonna do the head up position or in a fairly normal riding position where you can see straight on ahead. Now it's pretty windy out here, so you're gonna have to wish me the best of luck and I'm gonna try and ride the most consistent 300 watts I possibly can so that I can copy that across when I do the head down run after this. Right, let's do it. In three, two, one. Whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Windy for this first bit. Stay on the base bar, just as long as I mimic my positions and what I do for the tests. Keep everything nice and fair. Right, run one done. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty scary, even in the head up position. It's a pretty windy day, but it was nice to have a good visibility. So next up, I'm gonna put my head all the way down as aero as I can, and we're gonna repeat the experiment with all of the variables as consistent as we possibly can. Wish me luck again. Right, we're ready, run two, head down. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it's gonna be a, gonna be a tough run, this one. So my head down in this position, my front visibility is incredibly poor, but what I'm using as my reference point is the white line on the side of the track. Now, because we're in the controlled, safe environment of the racetrack, I know that I can do that. If I was out on the road, that would be a big no-no. Oh my, wowzers, that was absolutely horrific weather. Look at this thing. Um, I've got the stats, I've got all the data, or data saved on my head unit. I'm gonna head inside, find, uh, find Ollie, no doubt warm and dry. We're gonna discuss our results, and hopefully, with any luck, this will blow over, and it'll be glorious sunshine in a minute. Oh, a boy can dream. Before we get onto the results, it's pretty sketchy riding head down. TT bikes in general are a bit sketchy to ride. They aren't as good in technical corners as your weight is more forward and not as evenly distributed over the bike. The geometry in general is designed for straight line speed and stability, not high maneuverability and twisty corners. Right, Ollie, we've made it inside. It's a bit nicer in here, isn't it? 
Yeah, honestly, it didn't look like it was raining earlier on. Anyhow, thanks for, thanks for doing that. I've got the results. Your first run, head up, yeah. you did the three laps in seven minutes, three seconds, average power, 271. Yeah, I was quite happy with that. A bit down on what I estimated, but it was right. It was quite good having um, really nice visibility of where I was going. That was a good bonus. Cool. Next, head down, average power, 271 watts again. Consistent, what can I say? But you did it in six minutes, 49 seconds. So that, uh, 14 seconds quicker. Exactly the same power. Yeah, three well, laps. It's not a surprise to be honest, is it? We'd anticipated that rather than your head down, more aerodynamic, you're gonna go faster, right? So, yeah. How was it in the wind? Uh, very, very tough. Uh, <laughs> I nearly came off the track twice, but we survived, yeah. But, but, but well, good. Uh, it looks like it's gonna clear up actually, so I think we should go outside and uh, We'll see what conclusions we can draw from this. Sure, it's going to clear up? Yeah. All right. Clearly, head down riding is faster, but of course, it's obviously less safe as well. But I think we have to look at why riders are doing this. And I think it comes down to some very particular rules set by the UCI with regards to your bike position and your hand position. Yeah. Through aerodynamic testing carried out in the real world and also wind tunnels, many riders find that they gain an aerodynamic advantage by closing the gap between their hands and their head or getting their head sort of in line with their hands. Now, this is roughly thought to be because it's better to punch one hole through the air than two. If your head is sort of shielded or in line with your hands, you're punching a single hole through the wind. Whereas if your arms are down here, you're kind of presenting more to the wind. That's the rough theory. But the UCI has, well, rules relating to where your hand position goes, as Alex says. One of them, particularly pesky rule, says that your tri bars can't be more than 15 degrees. And there's also the 10 centimeter rule, which stipulates that the top of the shifters can't be more than 10 centimeters above the middle of the armrest pad. My tri bar extensions here are actually set at 20 degrees. That's because I don't race in UCI events. They have no jurisdiction here. <laughs> Now, if the UCI allowed riders to have their hands in a slightly different position, maybe higher, it might mean that they don't have to ride with their head in that really low position to act as one object rather than two. And as such, they might be able to ride in a position that allows them to see clearly forwards yeah, in a better way. Something that was previously known as the praying mantis position because it sort of looks a bit like a praying mantis insect. Now, because the UCI has these rules uh, relating to sort of tri bar positions, then well, it causes riders to do some quite silly things on their bikes. So things that I'll demonstrate now. One of the things is relating to the maximum length of the extensions that the UCI permits. And we've seen Filippo Ganna as a notable example, um, do this where you put your arm on the arm pad but his elbow is actually sort of here so he's not using the elbow pad for his elbow he's using it for his mid forearm and that's because the UCI doesn't allow his extensions to be as long as what he would like so when the officials come round at the start of the race and check that his bike is all within the regulations he simply just goes yeah it is look my elbow's in the right place. But then when he's actually riding and racing, you see his elbow's down there. Another thing that we see is because of that 10 centimetre rule and the height of the shifters, but riders wanting to get their hands higher, what they do is they get their little finger and they sit on the tri bars and they do this so that their hands are higher. But obviously you're not properly holding on to your, your extensions. And I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not very good if you have to you know, quickly manoeuvre in a hurry. It's not clearly not as safe because you're not as firmly held on. And this is something that I've seen several riders do, including Harry Tamfield, naughty boy. I think we should also just defend the UCI in the name of balance, because you do feel that whatever rules they might apply, people are always gonna try and gain an advantage by bending them as much as possible and perhaps doing something silly. And while we're saying that by changing the UCI rules, you could then get more sort of head up positions, that doesn't explain why there's sadly been accidents in amateur time trials where people have been doing head down riding 
in often in instances where the UCI rules don't apply. Yeah, I think in almost any situation, safety needs to come above the importance of aerodynamics. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, give it a big thumbs up. And I'm keen to hear your thoughts on the whole head down, head up riding position. So let us know in the comments section down below. And if you did enjoy this video, we'll share it far and wide with all three of your friends, just like I'm gonna. See you later. I've got four. Ha, ha, ha.